Amen, amen. Good morning, Second Baptist. Good morning. This is a beautiful day, y'all, that the Lord has made. Uh, we will start with our deacons who will come now and lead us in devotion. We welcome those who are here uh, in the sanctuary, and we welcome those who are live streaming online at home. Welcome to our service. Good morning, church. This morning we'll be reading from the 23rd uh, chapter of Psalms, the fifth verse from the New Living Translation. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. We've read from the 23rd verse of Psalms, the fifth, uh, fifth verse. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his word. Good morning, church. I'm going to lead us in prayer this morning. So bow your heads and prepare your hearts for, for, this, for this prayer. Father God, this morning we come before you, first and foremost, in thanksgiving. Thanking you, God, for being an awesome God, a provider, a healer, a father, a mother to many out there, a cure to a disease, Father God. You are everything to us, and we thank you and we appreciate you, Father God. During these times that we live in, and we don't, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but what we do all understand is that you are in control. We have murders going on, Father God. We have people dying from diseases, Father God. We need you right now, Father God. Let your, let your presence be known, Father God. There's a mother right now on her knees praying for her children, Father God. There's a family right now this morning, Father God, whose children didn't come home, Father God. We have grandparents in the hospital. Heal them, Father God. Watch over them. Let them know that you love them and, you, and you're going to take care of them, Father God. We trust and we believe in you. We have faith that you're going to make things whole and make things right, no matter what's going on in the news, no matter what's going on in D.C., Father God. We know that you are in full control, and in your control, that's who we will trust. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Again, we praise God for you and for your presence on this morning. This is a historic day in the history of Second Baptist Church. Amen. We will vote today following this service, and we thank God for getting us to this point. And we will vote, and uh, uh, God's will will be done for Second Baptist Church. We will Zoom Bible study on Wednesday at 7 o'clock in the evening. We invite you to Join us for Bible study on Wednesday. Uh, we will do a Facebook Live update on this Friday. This Friday at 3 p.m. we'll do a Facebook Live, and hopefully we'll have our pastor-elect with us on Friday at 3 o'clock. Remember the sick and shut in. Let us do the work of the church and be a blessing unto others. Uh, usually on the fourth Sunday, I know this is the fifth Sunday, but we celebrate marriages. We celebrate marriages here at Second Baptist Church. Those who are married in August, they are celebrating. Amen. So uh, I have a list. Uh, Freddie and Tony Walker. I just saw Freddie was praying as Reverend Tony. Amen. 51 years of marriage. Amen. 51 years. That's a long time. I don't care how you cut it or shape it. That's a long time. 
to God be the glory. Walk in here on 51 years. I'm talking about you. Come on up in here. Amen. Uh, Larry and Lena, 34 years. Is Lena here today? <laughs> Lee and Linda. I know I saw Lee there. Wave at us, Lee. Lee and Linda McIntosh, 31 years. Caesar and Elise Jackson. Elise usually runs our Zoom up in the front sanctuary for the overflow. Uh, they've got 27 years. Donnie and Kamiko Lewis, 26 years. Chris and Angie Oliver, I think I saw the Olivers. Where, stand up over there so we can see you. Amen. The Olivers got 23 years. Uh, Deacon Asa and Darlene Gordon, I know I saw him. He's in the back waving. Uh, they've got 15 years. Deshaun and Charlotte. Hey, that's my frat brother, y'all. Stand up, man, and give him a cue wave. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Amen. Congratulations, Miss Charlotte. Amen. 14 years. Uh, Richard and Terry, I saw, there's Terry right there. All right, Terry Young, 13 years. Mac and Tanisha McGee, 11 years. I married them, amen. Wellington and Tammy Azair, nine years. And is Tammy here? I got the sweetest email from her this week. Amen, thank you so much, Tammy. Uh, William and Pamela Gibson, nine years. Ricky and Krishna Taylor, nine years. Bruce and Denise Wilkins, I married them eight years. Byron and Latonya Furge, three years. I married them. I've been here a long time. We celebrate marriage at Second Baptist Church. It is now time for us to praise God, to praise God with our tithes and our offerings. As you prepare to give, let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for blessing us so that we can be a blessing unto others. Now, God, we ask that you would accept our humble gifts, bless them, multiply, use them, Father, for the building of your kingdom and the spread of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. We ask now that you prepare your heart uh, for a word from the Lord. We want to acknowledge uh, Sister Mabel Clark. She lost a brother uh, this week. We're praying for you in that loss. Uh, brother Arthur Nolan. Uh, Mr. Nolan passed on yesterday. Uh, he's the father of Mita Nolan and Sister Felicia Thompson. Uh, that's their father. And uh, Mr. Arthur was probably the oldest individual I ever baptized here. I baptized him here in his senior years, but uh, he went home to be at the Lord, and I will be traveling to San Diego, California, immediately following service. I lost my niece. My brother's uh, baby girl went home to be at the Lord, so I'll pray for those who are bereaved at this time. Our music ministry will come as we praise God up in here.
got a story to tell you. I got a story to tell you about some things that I've been through, but I'm healed. I'm healed. Oh, I'm healed. I've had some ups and some downs. And some downs. I've been level. Level to the ground, but I'm healed. I'm healed. Oh, I'm healed. I've had to wrestle. Had to wrestle all night long. I was wondering. Wondering what went wrong, but I'm healed. Life will have some sunshine, sunshine some rain. heartache, heartache and some pain. I'm healed. One more oh, time, I got a story to tell. I got a story to tell about some things about some that, things I've, that been, I've been through. Okay? But, I'm healed. but you know what? I'm healed. Oh, I'm healed. I've had some ups and some downs. Been down. level, level to the ground, but I'm healed. I'm healed. Oh, I'm healed. I've had the rest.
all day and bless your holy name. Come on, sing it. All I want to do is bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. For all you've done. For all you've done. All I want to do is. All I want to do is give you praise. Give you praise. Give you praise all day. And bless. And bless your holy name. For the blessing. my soul for honor and strength that you bestow for peace, love and joy you've given to me for mercy and grace every day I see said thank you Lord and bless your holy name
eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us and what you're doing right now. God, we know that you're working things out in the future. Uh, God, we made our way out to the church house longing to hear a word from you. Have your way, God. Uh, teach us what you would have us to learn, Father, on a day such as this. Your people need encouraging. Your people need edifying and lifting, God. We pray that your word will minister and meet every need. And we thank you, Father. If by chance there's one seeking a relationship, seeking a church home, if you desire to plant them here, God, we open our arms to receive them, even right now. This is our prayer. We ask in the only name that matters, the matchless, marvelous, magnificent name of the Master. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Now, we're going to vote a little later, but we've got to have church first. We're going to have some church first, yeah. We're going to have some church first. So today I want to teach briefly from the most well-known scripture in the Holy Bible, Psalms 23. If you'll stand, you won't be standing long. If you'll stand. And what I want to do is I'm going to drop down to the C clause of verse 5. The C clause of verse 5. And the King James Version says, my cup runneth over. And the New Living says, my cup overflows with blessings. All right. all right, you can be seated. You can be seated. That's all I want to talk about. That's all I want to talk about. That's all I want to talk about. My cup runs over. My cup runs over. Smile at me and say, me too, pastor. Me too. My cup is running over. Amen. Amen. Me too, pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In spite of a pandemic called COVID-19, my cup. Is running over. And in spite of being afraid of children returning to school, my cup is running over. And in spite of what seems like open season on black men and women, my cup runs over. In spite of poor leadership at the head of our country, my cup runs over. In spite of having to jump on an airplane to San Diego today to bury my niece on tomorrow, my cup is running over. As we come to the end of my season and the beginning of a new season for Second Baptist Church, y'all, my cup runs over. As we look back over all the days of our lives, we all have a choice to view them as being positive or negative. Any given moment, can be welcomed with rejoicing or with regret. We can choose to see the glass of our life experience as half empty or half full. There are some folks who look at the days of their lives and see only the negative. But other folks look at their lives and choose to see the positive. Whenever I ask Reverend Bolin, how you doing today? She always responds, I choose to be well. And I like that, y'all. I, I choose to be well. Let, let me teach just for a few moments. As, as we park here on the perimeter of Psalms 23, we encounter David peering over his shoulder at his past in his rearview mirror. And his summation of the situation that he has endured, his evaluation of all the aggravation and frustration and humiliation that he has undergone is this. God has been good to me. And therefore, he declares without equivocation that my cup runs over. And we know David, we know David. His life had not been without disappointment, difficulties, dysfunction, or despair. He was not immune from the sorrow, struggle, and suffering. Dr. William Curtis once proclaimed, every one of us will have to do hard time in a low place. David did not escape from fear, frailty, or failure. He did not march unmolested through the pain, pressure, and perils. And yet, as he evaluates his life, he declares, my cup runs over. David had made some mistakes, y'all. He is in the valley when this text is written, y'all, with enemies all around him. He, he, he's been run out of his own capital by his own son, Absalom, he, who sought to kill him so that he could replace him. Absalom's army and David's soldiers have gathered around the wilderness of Mahandam. And when David and his men were hungry and weary and thirsty, 
with no place to go and nowhere to turn, God mercifully sent some generous friends who prepared a table for them in the presence of their enemies to revive them and to restore them. And it's in that experience they remember God as a shepherd. And he says, even though I'm walking, even though I'm living, even though I'm dwelling, even though I'm running and hiding in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because I recognize that I'm not here by myself. That God is here with me. In fact, his rod and his staff, they are comforting me. So you see the problem, the problem of your past does not define your present, nor can it dictate your future. Somebody need to wake up and write that down. Y'all, I said a mouthful there. The problems of your past do not define your present, nor can they dictate your future. David lifted this litany literally out of his life living and reflecting upon what was meant to be a shepherd. He remembered that a good shepherd, a serious shepherd, is actively involved in the affairs of the sheep that a good shepherd at the end of the day, no matter where they had been, no matter how far they had wandered, every good shepherd will make an effort to bring every lamb one by one back into the sheepfold. Second Baptist Church, y'all, I tried to be a good shepherd. For 20 years, I tried, y'all, to be a good shepherd. And as they passed under the rod of correction, there was simultaneously the staff of protection. They would be counted and the shepherd would give each lamb his personal attention. I need to pause right there to remind somebody that you have the personal attention of Almighty God every single day of your life. Somebody missed it, I said it too fast. That wherever you are, God is there also. Not just up on the mountains, but even in the valley. Not just when you are successful, but even when you are failing. Not just when you're healthy, but even when you are sick. Not just when you are shouting, but even when you are crying. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to panic. And you don't have to fall apart because God is there. And there's not a moment that expires when God is not looking out for you. Keeping count of you watching over you and being concerned about you. Can I get about 10 of y'all to ask your neighbor, can I shout right there or should I wait till later? Because, because like the shepherd, y'all, God gives us personal attention. And as those sheep were brought back into the sheepfold at the end of the day, as they passed under the rod into the sheepfold, the shepherd would apply oil to their forehead oil to their womb and somebody up in here this morning is a witness that when you were wounded when you were injured it was nobody but God who tended your injuries and fixed your fractures and brought healing back into your life that that's how you survived that's how you made it back that's how you made it over that's how you made it out it was nobody but God nobody 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 but God Nobody but God. As those sheep entered the sheepfold, the shepherd would also dip a long cup in the cool water, fill it to the brim, and allow the sheep to drink deeply the cool, refreshing water. And that is what David is thinking about as he penned this line in this poem that says, my cup runs over. He's considering there how good God had been to him, how wonderful God had kept him. How incredibly God has lifted and protected him. So the cup here is symbolic of the blessings of the Lord. And I want to remind you that just like David, God has been good to every single one of us. Oh yes, he has. I ought to have some witnesses there. We have all drank from the cup of God's blessing. Our God is a God of overrunning cups, overwhelming mercies, overpowering blessings, and overarching miracles. There's no one, regardless of uh, the hand of the life has dealt you, the pain that life has brought you, or the challenges that life has served you, there's nobody here who can honestly and authentically say that God has not been good to you. 
I'm going to park right there as you go through the roller decks of your mind and realize how good God has been. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. We have shelter and clothing and health. We are blessed. Now, now you might be meditating on your misery and park somewhere in your pain. You, you may be ignoring your blessings and overlooking your miracle, but that doesn't mean that they aren't there. As we assess our lives, all of us, despite anxiety, agony, and anguish, can say with David, my cup runs over. Well, preacher, what is David trying to show us with this cup image? First, he shows us our blessings are abundant. Our blessings are abundant. Let the whole church say abundant. And notice the language that David employs. My cup runs over. That God has not given me a little sip. I don't have just a drop. Y'all, my cup is full, ample, and jam-packed. That God has blessed me in an abundant way. And even in a redundant way. As David considers this cup, he is reminded of how generous the blessings of the Lord are. Would you help me right here? Look at somebody like you love them and just tell them God is generous, neighbor. Yeah, you can talk through your mask. God is generous, neighbor. God doesn't just give us enough, but God gives us more than enough. That's how good God is. That's how good God had been to David, y'all. That's how good God has been to each one of us. David cups and our cup runs over. In Psalm 16, down around verse 5, David says to the Lord, you are my portion. You are the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. In the ancient Masoretic Hebrew text, y'all, the word portion means something that has been measured out, measured out, something that has been weighed out, something that has been rationed out in a large manner. And David was saying that God has outsized and supersized the blessings of my life. And he's not the only one who can make that confession this morning because all of us know what it is to go through the fast food drive through like, like, like McDonald's or 7-Eleven and you make your order and they say, well, what size do you want? And you say, well, what size is available? And they say, well, we got regular, we got medium, we got large, and we got supersize. Do you know what supersize is? Supersize means you're going to get more, yes, more than you can even handle right now at this experience. Y'all miss that. But I know I'm talking to at least five of y'all who've gone through the fast food lane of prayer, and you placed your order, and when you came out, it was supersize. It was more than you asked for, child. It was more than you counted. It was more than you were looking for. And God just blessed you because he loved you. God's cup is always full of blessings. I read an article one time that spoke of simple blessings and special blessings. The simple blessings are those things that we enjoy and often take for granted in life. These simple blessings are enjoyed by everybody, whether you know God or not. Matthew 5, 45 tells us that God makes his son to rise and shine on the evil and the good. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust. All of us are the recipients of simple blessings. Whether you love God or not, whether you follow God or not, God is so good that he just blesses you anyhow. And there's somebody listening to me right now who woke up this morning after sleeping in God's bed, in God's pajamas, in God's provision, and got up, you ate God's food, you put on God's clothes, you drove to God's streets, in God's car, using God's gas, now you're in God's house, and if you're zooming in, you're on God's internet, and the sad part is that you still haven't said anything to God yet. And yet God is blessing you anyway. Go on, tell somebody he's just good like that. He's just good like that. Yeah, yeah, God is just good like that, y'all. See, he makes sure 
that we have air to breathe. He makes sure that the blood is running warm in our veins. And, and that all our organs, all our arteries and capillaries and veins are functioning properly. All, all of our systems are working in unison. You, you can put one foot in front of the other, y'all, and your brain tell your eyes which way to look, and then your eyes report back to your brain what is so. Your ears can pick up sound, and you don't even know which direction it's coming from. And your hands and your feet can operate in digital dexterity, one with another. I tell you, God is blessing you, child. God is blessing you right now. Right now. Oh, yes, he is. There are simple blessings. If you can move your legs, you bless. If you can move and wave your hand, you bless. If you're breathing without assistance, you're blessed, child. If you can see me while I see you, you are blessed. If you can talk and put sentences together, you, you know where the verb goes and where the noun goes and where the adjective goes. Ain't nothing else got to happen to you because you're already blessed. You, you, you don't need a million dollars to be blessed. You don't have to be pushing a Benz or a Buick to be blessed. Just the fact that you woke up this morning. Yeah, yeah. I got another shout out to everything I've been through. Child, I'm already blessed. Go on, look at somebody and say, neighbor. That's why I don't need your permission to shout. <laughs> that's why I don't need your permission to shout. I, I don't need you to tell me I can. I don't need any music. Corey, I don't need any drums. I don't need any pumping up. All I need to do is just sit here and start thinking about how blessed I am. If I start thinking, y'all, I'm subject to holler, it ain't nothing hurting. I'm subject to dance, it ain't no music. I'm subject to run, it ain't nobody chasing me because I'm blessed. Because I'm wonderfully, marvelously blessed. I'm blessed. See, there are simple blessings that we all enjoy. But then there are special blessings. Special blessings for each person who chooses to come into a relationship with God. They receive that those who fail to make that choice do not enjoy. Only a child of God can say the Lord is my shepherd. Only a child of God can say the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? These special blessings are the ones that come from the cup of salvation. And that cup always runs over. Because whenever we think about how good God is and how good God has been to you and to me, we can't begin to name them. We can't begin to count them. We are just, they are just too many, y'all. They're, they're just too numerous to try to count. And that's why sometimes when you come to church, you fool around and sit next to somebody who's got a good memory. Yeah, when there ain't anything scheduled on the program, ain't no praise written in the bulletin. That person just starts saying, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you be looking like, what's wrong with them? There ain't nothing wrong with them, baby. They just got a good memory. I dare you to look at somebody like you don't care. Like you don't care what they think. Say, neighbor, if you only knew, if you only knew, child, what I've come through, if you only knew the trials I had to endure, if you only knew the burdens I had to bear, if you only knew how many times I felt like giving up and giving in and giving over and nobody but the Lord stepped into my situation and worked it out. Child, I'm glad to be alive. Go and tell somebody, my cup this morning is running over. I don't have a little sip in my cup. My cup is running over. I ought to lean over and tell you, can I borrow your salsa? Because I don't want to wet up everything in this house. My cup is running over. Now, now, now for a teaching moment. What you may not have noted in the past about Psalms 23 is this. Is that all of the verbs are in the imperfect tense. I went to school on you which means by way of grammar that the action being described is not a one-time action. It is a continuous action. Don't miss that. Don't miss your shout, y'all. That, that means that God is your shepherd and will continue to be your shepherd. 
God will make you lie down in green pastures continually. He will anoint your head with oil over and over and over again. God will run your cup over and over and over again. God is God and he has been and he will continue to be good to you and to me. Say so anybody in here uh, sitting at home who don't mind confessing with me. I have what I have y'all. I am who I am. I do what I do because God has shown up, shown out and shown off in my life. And note that the shepherd does all of this for the sheep because of his love. Mm-hmm. Because of his love. Help me preach a neighbor. God does not bless you because you all that in a bag of chips. No, 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 baby. God blesses you because he loves you. Now that might free somebody in here this morning. He takes care of you because he loves you. He watches over you because he loves you. All of us like sheep, sheep have gone astray. According to the prophet, y'all, the blessings that we enjoy are expressions of God's grace and God's love. I know it's time to vote in our election, y'all, but can I have a few minutes for myself? Because when I start thinking about the blessings that I've enjoyed, when I think about how my cup runs over, when I think about the fact that none of these blessings do I deserve, it is then that I realize just how good God has really been to me. God has blessed me generously. God has blessed me graciously. And I don't think I'm the only one up in here. In spite of what we are, in spite of what we have been, in spite of what we've done, God still sets before us an overflowing cup. And after the long day, the shepherd sets before the sheep a cup of cool water. It is there for the taking, y'all. All they got to do is drink from the cup. The shepherd provides it, but he will not ram it down their throat. You got to take it. So I need to tell somebody God will provide it, but you got to do the drinking. God will initiate but you've got to appropriate. When it comes to God's blessing, all of us ought to drink deep and shout from drinking deep. God's blessings are abundant. As one of his children, we should stick our heads in his cup and drink deep. Don't let nobody talk you out of your blessing. Don't let any two scripture quoting person convince you that God is not blessing you. You need to stick your own head in and drink deep. Don't live through somebody else's faith. You got to get to know God for yourself. I got to go, y'all. But lastly, we ought to appreciate God's cup of blessings. You ought to appreciate God's cup of blessing. The overflowing cup should always be followed by an overflowing praise. And I'll just confess for myself. Neighbor, if I am nothing else, y'all, I am indeed grateful. If I am nothing else, y'all, I am indeed thankful. I got a lot to be thankful for. If I had time, it would take me all day. Matter of fact, it would take me all night. Matter of fact, it would take me all week. Matter of fact, winter would be here. And I'd still be telling you, about the goodness of God and all the good things that God has done in my life because as I'm talking about it, he's still blessing me. As I'm praising him, he's still making a way. Praise ought to overflow out of your grateful heart. So if you don't mind, let us praise God up in here, up in here. Why don't we praise him right now? Why don't we praise him? For his goodness, praise him for his blessings, praise him for his thankfulness, praise him 
for providing. Praise him for leading. Praise him for teaching. Praise God. Praise God. Let everything, everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Thank you for my journey. Thank you for all the ups. Thank you for the mountaintop experiences. Then God, thank you for the days I spent in the valley. For even in my valley moments, you were there. Thank you, Master. That's why my cup my cup overflows with the blessings of God. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this body of believers. Thank you, Father, for the little band of ex-slaves, God, who jumped out of a railroad box car in a place called Elgin, Illinois and started this little fellowship. God, as we look back, we realize nobody but you. You brought us, God. Lord, when we sold fish dinners and pound cakes, you brought us, God. When we peddle sweet potato pies, God, you brought us. And even as we stand at this historic moment, we know that you will keep your hands upon us. We know that our future is as bright as the promises of God. So we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be grateful.
stay there. Stay there. We want to extend an invitation to discipleship. If you've never accepted Christ as your personal Savior, today's a good day. If you're not anchored in a church body where you can praise Him and serve Him, we'd love to have you as a part of this church body. We extend an invitation to discipleship right now. You can come. Surrender your life unto the Lord. Allow God to fill your cup so that it overflows with blessings. Oh, be grateful. Take it back one more time. He, he said in the word, he, he never leave you crazy. He said in the word, he never forsake you. No matter what it looks like, you you got to be grateful. Thank you. real soft. Just stay there. At this time, I'm going to dismiss our election staff, our election team, and ushers have specific assignments as to where they are going. Everyone else, we're going to ask if you would remain. So grateful. He also said, We have some instructions coming from Deacon McCutcheon. The chair of our deacon ministry is going to come with some final instructions on the election process. Good morning, Second Baptist. A uh, few instructions as we prepare to vote. If you vote electronically, you can either stay in the service until the final vote is counted and announced, or you may leave at this time under the Urshish direction. If you vote electronically and you don't plan to stay to the announcement, we will start live screaming at 12.30 for the announcement. The vote will go up until 12 o'clock. Then we'll count the ballots and at 12.30 we'll start the screaming. So if one of one want to leave now, you're welcome to go now. Okay, I see no one. When you vote, oh, come on, Ursha's. Okay, when you vote, if you plan to stay, we ask that you come back to the Mother Purpose Center. If not, we ask that you, uh, you can leave, in a, uh, leave the building. Okay. We're going to send peoples out in groups of 20s, a 
Okay. Here's the directions. Urge is going to be in the hallway. You're going to follow the hallway up, up to the front. When you get to the front sanctuary, there's two tables. It is section, uh, section one. One table says last name A through L. Second table says M through Z. So you know what table to stop at with your last name. Okay. As you go up, there's blue tapes in the hallway six feet apart. We ask that you go by, by that rule. Say six feet, please. Now, if you're a husband and wife, you can stand at a tape together. Okay. So once you get at table one, they're going to give you a sticker with your name on it and your number on it. From that piece, you keep walking. Earth is going to direct you back through the sanctuary into the fellowship hall. In the fellowship hall, there's section two. So you're going to have two sections, two. You're going to have one as soon as you walk in, then you're going to have one on the back wall. You go there, you give them your sticker. They're going to put it on the ballot. You're going to sign for the ballot. They're going to tear the ballot off, and you're going to go to section three. It's the voting table where you can cast your vote. Once you cast your vote, there's a ballot box on the exit door out of the fellowship hall. And then you ask you that you return back to here. Or if you want to leave, feel free to leave. Okay. Any questions? Okay. We're going to start up front because we have about 30 people up front. So we're going to let them go first because some of those may want to get out uh, leave as well, and plus we want to do the uh, make sure everybody's six feet apart. At this time, I'm gonna ask Reverend Love and Sister Love if they will leave and go vote. I know we got a delay for those that are in the uh, sanctuary. We ask that when you go out to vote, go out the west door, that is the door by the piano, and go to tables one to get your tag. While you are sitting, while everybody is voting, the praise team is going to be singing, so you won't have to just sit here with nothing. You can continue to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I'm just kind of giving it a time because of the delay. With me. Okay. Okay, Sister Hodges, you want to get your first 20. 